Um, if you have a buffer, so let's start with buffers. If you have a buffer, you have a conjugate pair that are approximately the same molarity. Uh, by, and the reason we introduced common ion before we added, talked about buffer is the conjugate, so the A minus in this case, is the common ion. So by nature of having a common ion, you have just created a buffer. So for example, if I have uh, HF, and let's, that's my weak acid, I'll say, okay, I can write a reaction now. F minus plus uh, H3O plus. So if I have that reaction, that's a weak acid. I expect the percent ionization to be low, or the reaction does not go forward very much. Ka is small. All those sort of things. Now, separate from that, uh, I can add sodium fluoride. That is a common ion. The common ion is the F minus. So here, Na plus F minus, that F minus, and that one. Those are common ions. I have also just made a buffer because I have HF and F minus. So by nature of adding a common ion, I have a buffer. Okay, so what does the common ion do? Common ion. Uh, there's two ways of thinking about it, but the net uh, thing that it does is it raises the pH. Okay, how are the two ways that you can think about that? If I add a common ion, NaF, or really F minus, that's going to shift the reaction to the left. It's going to drop the H3O plus concentration, which will raise the pH. The second way of thinking about the exact same thing is to say if I add F minus, that's a base. It's the conjugate base. The pH better go up because I'm adding a base, literally. So either way, adding the common ion, which is making a buffer, uh, raises the pH. Okay. So that's the common ion. Now let's do a little bit just pure buffer stuff. Uh, to talk about the buffer, we use this equation called the Henderson-Hasselbach. It is a simplification of the ice table. So if you solve the ice table, you would end up with that equation. I don't, let me see if I brought that pKa. So you need the pKa. I would give it to you on the back of the exam. This should be true of the other instructors as well. Are folks here from other classes as well? Yeah. Yes, welcome. So there's Osterlo. Hi, one person, cool. Oh, a couple of you up there. What other? Uh, shoot, who else is teaching to me? Gulakar. A couple of you. Okay, welcome. And then, uh, Winnie. Oh, the person I'm subbing for suit because of the thing going on. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, you should confirm with your instructor, but they should give you a table like this on the exam. That's pretty normal. So you would say, okay, I'm doing HF. If I'm doing that buffer, then the pH, uh, the pK, or pKa is 3.18. So I already know this value. And so when you're doing a buffer problem, really there's kind of two there's a couple typical ways that a buffer problem could go. You could just find the pH of the buffer alone, okay? Which is the easiest. All you would need to know is the molarity of the base and the acid, okay? The ideal would be the base and acid molarity are the same, and in that case, the pH equals the pKa. That is the ideal location for the buffer to work. The buffer works best when the pH it's buffering at is plus or minus one of the pKa. So this will work ideally between 2.18 and 4.18, plus or minus one off of this. Otherwise, it might exceed its buffer range. Okay, or you can have find the pH if you add uh, something to the buffer. Okay. In that case, you're going to have a two-part problem. Part one, you're doing stoichiometry always. And then part two, you're going to use the henderson hasselbach Okay. Whereas if it was just the buffer, you're only using the henderson hasselbach 
So when you add something that adds stoichiometry to the problem, the stoichiometry tells you the new concentration of base and acid, and then you can solve it. And then kind of a variation I did is if you want to make a buffer. Uh, we did an example of this where uh, it's just this equation, just the henderson hasselbach but basically the pH is given, and you're working backwards to find B or A or both. So B and or A, those concentrations. All right, so those are the typical styles if it's a calculation-based problem. So for example, uh, let's do it uh, just a little walkthrough if we have HF, and let's say it has a molarity of 0.8, and F, since I'm making this up, I won't have answers for you. Uh, and then F minus, so you get to calculate this at home, 0 0.9. Let's say these are both molarity units, okay? So these are both concentrations. Then, if you just want to run the pH of the buffer, you just use the henderson hasselbach pH is pKa plus the log, the base over the acid. And you just have to plug the right things into the right places. So the base is 0.9, F minus, acid 0.8, pKa 3.18, and you run it through. You would expect the pH to be similar to 3.18 or different? A little bit different, but it should be pretty close to that number. Okay? So uh, unless you just have a really bad buffer, it should be close to 3.18. So that's the add. Uh, if you just want the pH of the buffer. Now let's practice adding something to the buffer, just so you can see what that's like. You'll see that all this will add is a stoichiometry part to the problem. Okay, so if I'm adding something to the buffer, I would say, oh, okay, we're adding, then I'll just pick some random base, KOH. Let's say we have one liter of solution, just to make our life easy. And let's say the molarity that I'm adding is 0.02, uh, moles of KOH to the solution. So you know you're going to do stoichiometry first. You just have to figure out what that is. Okay, so what you do is you look at what you're adding, KOH. You figure out that's a base. And so then you look back at your buffer. Let's write the buffer again. H, F, and F minus. Left or right, which one will react with what's added? The one on the left, H, F because I have a base, and bases only react with acids, and vice versa. So if I add a base, the acid part of the buffer will react. If I add an acid, the base part of the buffer will react. So since I'm adding a base, I will go, I'll take the acid part of the buffer, HF, and I will add the base. Personally, I don't like to write the spectator ions, so you will not see me write them, but if you wrote it, it's no big deal. This, I know, will go forward about 100%. Why is that? Whenever you add a strong, or a, at least one strong entity is in the reactants, it'll go forward completely. So that strong entity is KOH. Uh, so we'll get F minus, HF will lose a proton, and OH will gain a proton. Okay, so there's my, this is gonna be stoichiometry. You will see why in a moment. Let's write down the numbers that I just moved. Let's see. HF was 0.8. This was 0.9. And this was 0 0.2. Oh, 0 0.02. What? And we're, I don't care about water. It's just a liquid. Okay. What units am I in right now? Okay, good. I asked. What units should I be in? Mole. I should be in moles because I'm about to do stoichiometry. Uh, I told you there was one liter of solution, so this is molarity and moles because of the one liter solution. If it was not one liter, you'd have to multiply out to get two moles. Make sure moles are in your stoichiometry table. Now, let's figure out why do I know this is a stoichiometry table? Besides, I told you that when you add something to a buffer, you're doing stoichiometry first. Yeah. Uh, what's my favorite side, right or left? The right side is favored because it goes forward 100%, so this is the unfavored side. My class, what do I need on the unfavored side? A zero. Okay, if you're from the other classes, basically the rule of thumb is you know you're going to do stoichiometry, which we're about to do. 
if you have a uh, okay, uh, you need a zero on the unfavored side. If you do not have a zero on the unfavored side, you must do stoichiometry. Okay, I do not have this is the unfavored side over here. I don't have a zero there, so I must do stoichiometry right now. That's the general rule of thumb. Not even a rule of thumb. It's just uh, the way chemistry works. It has to go forward. Okay, so what I'm going to do? Take the smaller one, which is the limiting reactant, subtract it from both sides, subtract it from uh, its own side, and then add it to the other side. As such, so we got 0 0.78, 0, 0 0.92. Do I still have a buffer? Yeah, I do. I have this and this. They're a conjugate pair, and they have a similar molarity. So I still have my buffer. What am I going to do now to solve my problem or really find pH? Anderson Hasbach. pH is pKa, that was 3.18, plus the log. What number is in the numerator? Yeah, the base number, 0 0.92, 0 0.78 is here, and I just made it up, so I don't know what the answer is. Is the answer going to be similar to 3.18 or very far from 3.18? Very similar. It's a buffer. You can't change buffers by definition. So unless you break the buffer, it's going to be always similar to pKa. All right. Uh, let's see. That was common ion buffers. Okay. We did all of those questions, actually, just now. Cool. Did I get your questions? Okay, yes. And then I'll go over here. Yeah. Oh, okay, a common ion effect. Let's say I add F minus to HF. How significant will the pH change increase? How significant is the increase? A little bit or a lot? <coughs> wow, that would be a great test question. Um, it, it's, it's usually significant uh, because it depends on the concentration, because pH is concentration dependent. But you're comparing the pH of a weak acid, in our case HF, with a buffer. So the weak acid, it depends on its pH, but uh, it's usually noticeably lower. So for example, in our class, we did uh, acetic acid buffer versus acetic acid by itself. By itself, it was 2.52. When we added the common ion to make the buffer, it went up to like 4.7. But then once it's a buffer, it'll stay the same. So you can't change the buffer, or it's hard to change the buffer. But once, but if it's just an acid and you add a common ion, it's going to change noticeably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the question is, what happens if you add a weak base to a buffer? Uh, it's so insignificant that that is like a, a non-play, like that, we usually don't do that. Uh, so it's good you're thinking that way, but you're not going to see that as a common thing because that will have basically zero change to the buffer. So we wouldn't even solve that typically because the a weak base cannot push a buffer anywhere because it's so weak is the problem. So that's why you've always seen us adding strong acids or bases to a buffer. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to do that, yeah, you'd have to find the net acid or base somehow, uh, which would be difficult, probably having to use the ice table though. Yes? Where, what are examples where you have to do stoichiometry and still an ice table afterwards? So always when you add something to a buffer, that's the most common that you've seen now. It could have happened in the past, but we've never done that. Um, but there, there's no lead in, there's no secret words that you would read in the problem or tip or hint or anything that will indicate to you you're about to do stoichiometry outside of a buffer problem. So you always just have to check if you have a zero on the other favorite side. If not, you're moving towards stoichiometry. Uh, so there's no, there's no secret about it, per se.
Uh, yeah, so would you ever have to do stoichiometry in an ice table? Yes, with buffers you're effectively doing that. But Henderson Hasselbach is your ice table. Later, we're going to be doing problems in the next chapter which don't have a, a nice, clean Henderson Hasselbach type formula. And so it'll be straight ice table from there. Uh, if you see the problem I posted like a week or two ago before class that said stoichiometry, uh, that was one example of that, which we'll be doing next chapter. Okay, let's keep it going. <laughs>